Well, welcome everyone to Clothe in Power, a collaboration between Alpha and Divine Renovation. You're all so very welcome to be here with us for this exciting event. My name is Eric Myatt. I'm the Canadian Director with Divine Renovation and would love to see uh, where you're joining us from if you'd like to pop that into uh, the chat uh, at this time. For those of you who are new, uh, Alpha is an amazing ministry based on an 11-week interactive experience where people are excited to bring their friends for a conversation about faith, about life, and God. Divine Renovation exists to inspire, connect, and equip priests and leaders to bring their parish from maintenance to mission so that more people can have their lives transformed by the Lord Jesus. So we have uh, for this event interpretation available. So um, if you can understand me now, um, but prefer to listen to this event in another language, you can click the interpretation button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and select your language. We're also having that in the chat so that everyone can get settled into their uh, their interpretation channel. Again, we have people joining from all over the world. It's so amazing to be together here today. And if you're just joining us, please do chime in in the chat to share where you're joining us from. And uh, we'd love to see where we're, we're getting together from all over the world. For today's topic, Catholics around the world want to see their parishes come alive. But the reality is hard work alone, we know it can only get us so far. And when our efforts don't don't seem to make a difference, it's easy to feel a sense of discouragement and, and feel defeated. And working to bring renewal to your parish can be so very challenging, as many of you on this call know very well. And that's why today we're going to rediscover how you can invite the Holy Spirit to be the protagonist, the person who is the, the main driver behind the transformation of your parish. And so uh, in that light, let's begin with prayer as we uh, start this session and uh, start to unpack this, uh, this important topic. So won't you join me in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we honor you and we bless you. We thank you for your goodness, for your goodness to each of us, for the unique gifts and uh, the unique affection that you have for each of us. We thank you most especially for the gift of your son, Jesus. Jesus, we gather here in your name from all over the world, but united in you. And we are confident in your presence with us. Though separated, we are united in you. Jesus, please, would you send your Holy Spirit to be with us? Give us attentive ears and open hearts to all that you would like to share with us today. Give us an openness to whatever you want to give us and bring to us today. Bless our, our speakers, our panelists, and really stir in us uh, a desire to draw closer to you and draw others closer to you through your power, Holy Spirit. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am so honored and pleased to introduce our panel now for this exciting discussion. Dr. Mary Healy is a professor of scripture at Sacred Heart Major Seminary in Detroit, uh, and a best-selling author and international speaker. She serves on the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity and is a consultor to the Dicastery for Divine Worship and the, dis the Discipline of the Sacraments. So welcome, Dr. Mary. Thanks for joining us. Sarah Kazmarek. Yeah, thanks for having us, uh, being here. Sarah Kazmarek is the Director of pastoral ministry at Encounter Ministries, and she's an overseer of the Encounter School of Ministry. Uh, Sarah served as the Associate Director of Alpha in the Catholic context in the U.S. before joining um, Encounter Ministries 
and she holds an MA in counseling. So thank you for joining us, Sarah. And uh, I'll also introduce Father Alex Kaladi. Uh, he's the associate pastor of St. Benedict Parish in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And uh, he graduated from Sacred Heart Major Seminary and was ordained to the priesthood in 2018 with the Companions of the Cross. So Father Alex co-authored uh, Divine Renovation's latest uh, book that, that we published, Preaching on Purpose, a Divine Renovation Handbook for Communicating the Gospel today. So thanks for being here, Father Alex. And leading our conversation today, and last but not least, uh, Michael Roche is the Relationship Manager at Alpha UK, and he'll be leading our conversation for today. So over to you for that, Mike. Thanks, Eric, and uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, delighted to be here. Uh, well, listen, we've got a huge topic to talk about and a lot to get through, no doubt. So let's get stuck straight in with my first question from my wonderful panel. Uh, and really, this question is is very simple. It's um, really, what what is it that we mean when we talk about experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit and why is it so important? And I think uh, we'll probably hear from maybe we'll go to Dr. Mary first on this one. Then maybe we'll hear from Sarah and then we'll go to, to Father Alex. So, Dr. Mary, over to you. Yes, thank you. Um, we are living in such exciting times. Really, it, it is amazing to be alive in the church right now. Um, here in the United States, the bishops called for a three-year Eucharistic revival. And that began about nine months ago. And their desire is to reawaken faith in the Eucharist, in the real presence of Jesus. But it's interesting that they called it a revival. Um, for Catholics, a more familiar term is renewal. And if we think of renewal, it could, it could suggest a, a human effort to improve something that is in poor condition like an urban renewal program. But the bishops didn't use the word renewal. They called it revival. And I, I think it's because they recognize, particularly the bishop who instigated this, he recognized that revival, literally bringing alive what was dead, is something only God can do. Only God can put flesh on dry bones and breathe life into them so that they come alive. So here we are in this Eucharistic revival in the United States, and then all of a sudden something happens at a little Methodist university called Asbury that makes headlines around the world. And um, many of you have probably heard of the Asbury revival that began in February. And, and basically what happened was there was an ordinary chapel service among students at this university. It was going to end like normal, but somehow the presence of God became so palpable that people were deeply touched by the presence of God and they didn't want to leave. And, and then word began to spread and more people came and they continued to pray all night, day and night for more than two weeks. And, and people describe um, the presence of God that you could just feel when you walked in the room. There were conversions, tears of sorrow, deep contrition for sin. There were healings. People were delivered from demonic bondage. So many incredible things happened. And it, it's almost as if God is showing us, he, he's giving this, us this prophetic sign, this is what revival looks like. Mm. And it is not something that can be planned by human beings. Mm -hmm. All our best strategies, no matter how well-intentioned or energetic, cannot create revival. But God wants revival. And so we have to open ourselves to it. And, and really, this is the call that goes all the way back to Jesus before he ascended into heaven. And he gave the great commission to his disciples, bring my good news to the end of the earth. 
he then said, wait, don't go yet. <laughs> don't go. You don't have yet what you need to do this. And he said, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he, now in, in 2023, the church needs to hear those words again. We cannot carry out our mission until we're clothed in power from on high with an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a manifest presence of the Holy Spirit that radically changes people and, and does things that no catechetical program, no human effort could bring about. So God is showing it to us in, in a way that is resounding throughout the world because he wants us as Catholics to take that in and say, that's what we need. That's what we need. The kind of Holy Spirit power, the revival that only God can bring about. Amen. I want to go on. on just listening to Mary <laughs> preach. I'm ready. Um, I love that you brought up uh, Asbury, Mary. Uh, I had the privilege of actually going to experience uh, a couple of days there at the Asbury Revival and see for myself this sovereign move of God seemingly through a particular generation that kind of what Mary was speaking about they were crying out they were actually asking God they're like we can't go until we know your love until we've experienced the true love of God we can't leave this university we can't go out on mission we need an experience of the true and profound transformative love of God and so they were praying and, and pressing in and the beautiful love of God that filled that chapel for days and nights, as Mary shared on end, did transform. I watched these young people have these powerful encounters with the Holy Spirit that freed them, delivered them, healed them, transformed them. But that wasn't the end. And that's what I love of uh, this particular story of Asbury is just like at Pentecost, that the transformation wasn't just for them. It began with them and, and was filling them and changing them and empowering them. But then it sent them, it, it sent them out. And one of the beautiful things uh, to see, at least from my experience at Asbury was to see these young people have the transformation and then go and tell everyone and grab as many people as they could for them to have the experience that they had had with the love of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's just so beautiful to see that this generation, this young generation in the, in the States, we, we call them Gen Z, right? But they're looking for an authentic, pure, real experience of God, of his love, of his power. And I believe that when we press in as the church, as Mary is saying that this generation and every generation in our churches um, will not just be Gen Z, but Gen Zealous, that we will become a church that's known for our, our zeal and our passion and our, and our love that we cannot do on our own. We cannot do in our own power. And so I think it's such an encouragement to look to Asbury and other places around the U.S. and the Eucharistic revival here in the Catholic Church for what God is doing and what God is particularly inviting us into now. Amen to that. Yeah, I was, uh, I'm a bit jealous, Sarah. I would have loved to get down to Asbury. In fact, I was like, look, as soon as I heard about it, I was like looking up flights and how I might get down there, but it's actually like, uh, probably easier and cheaper for me to fly to India than to get to, uh, Kentucky from here in Nova Scotia. So anyway, but Hey, revival can hit us anywhere. Right. And so we're praying for that. Um, the question, you know, what do we mean by experiencing the power of God? Um, I mean, that means a whole lot of things, right? If you open the book of Acts, beginning with uh, the, the experience of Pentecost, of the apostles, we see all kinds of signs and wonders and miracles and experiences. Um, but I think perhaps the most important thing that I think about when I talk about the power of God is the experience of being loved by God, right? Um, Paul talks, Romans 5.5 5 says, the, uh, the love of God has been poured into our hearts 
through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And, you know, love is one of the most transformative human experiences. And I think we, the tendency is for us to hear a passage like that or uh, talk about the love of God as a, as a priest from the pulpit. And, and that can be an intellectual exercise, but love is not an intellectual exercise. It's an existential experience. And so I think that when we're talking about the power of God, we're talking about people's lived experience, feeling love by the power of God. Um, and I think I go to, you know, uh, m- talked about Alpha, uh, Eric introduced Alpha at the beginning. And I think about the stories of people who've been through Alpha, people who have been far away from the faith, uh, far away from God. And they're like, you know, over and over again, what I hear is people describing an experience of being loved by God. And so when I think of, yeah, what, do, what does it mean to experience the power of God? I think first and foremost, uh, this existential experience of being loved by God, which changes everything, uh, my life included. And so as a church, we need to share that with everybody. Wow, fantastic. I think that's, that's the webinar done for me. I think that's it really. <laughs> um, that's just, just from those three things. Yeah, let's, Amazing. Um, I, I think the three of you have beautifully sketched out for us there kind of what we're talking about. And and it's easy to see why that is so important. I guess my next question for you then really is, having said all of that, is why 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 do we think maybe this has not necessarily been a normal experience at parish level? I mean, for most of us, in most of our parishes, most of the time, that's not a normal experience. We've had to kind of go elsewhere to, to, to get that. So maybe j- just for us to tease out why we think that might be. Father Alex, I'm going to come to you first on this one as someone in parish leadership, and then maybe we'll hear from Sarah and then over to, to, to Mary. So Father Alex, over to you. Yeah, sure. So I'll just share from my own experience, you know, somebody in pastoral ministry um, in a very you know, busy parish. Sure, there are people joining us who are in way busier parishes than us, but all I know is my parish is very busy and uh, I can get caught up in the daily grind, right? And every moment that I'm not working on something, my to-do list is getting longer and longer and longer. And so it's so easy just to get heads down uh, in the nitty gritty of the work and forget that uh, we're not in fact running the church. Like, you know, we, we get into the, 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 the hamster wheel of running the church, but I think God wants to run the church. And so I think just the, the, the reality of daily life as a priest, as a, as a pastor uh, in, in ministry, uh, it can be really all encompassing. Um, and so I think that's one of the major challenges is to stop and create space uh, to surrender my own projects and plans to allow God to move in that. And I think, you know, there's a lot of fears uh, that are really real. And I can, again, speak from my own experience. Like, you know, we talk about um, leaning in, asking God to move, inviting the Holy Spirit, praying for healing, stepping out in faith. And that can be a terrifying experience. You know, um, I experience fear of rejection fear of failure. And I think there's uh, even really deep existential fear. Like if I step out and say, you know, in the alpha Holy spirit time or the alpha healing night and really like pray for words of knowledge and, 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 and speak them out. Like, what if nothing happens, right? Like, what does that mean if God doesn't move and act? And I think that can be a really terrifying experience. So I think that's another thing that kind of we struggle with. Just there's a lot of fears involved in leaning into surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Um, and finally, I think just on a practical note as well, uh, the Holy Spirit is often referred to as the forgotten member of the Holy Trinity. Uh, and we forget that the Holy Spirit is not a thing, but a person. And you can have a relationship with a person. And I think that we've, we need to rediscover what it means to cultivate intimacy with the Holy Spirit as a person, this living, dynamic person that's active and effective in our lives. Yeah, I think that's, that's such a key, right, that the Holy Spirit is a person. And, and we talk about people we love, right? When we love someone or we have relationship with someone, we can't help but speak about uh, who they are. And I, I think it's an invitation for us as leaders in the church to really look at um, is the overflow of our heart of love and relationship and intimacy with the Holy Spirit being spoken about 
in our churches, in our meetings, in our programs. I remember my very first um, Alpha Weekend Away, and I remember a, a woman coming up to me after we had just done the videos on the Holy Spirit, which are so convicting, and you're like ready to go. And she came up to me and said, I'm, I'm kind of upset. And I'm like, uh-oh, this is early. We're supposed to have to deal with things later when things get a little wild. But she's like, no, I'm kind of upset. Like, if what I'm hearing is true, if this is real, like, I feel like I've missed out on so much uh, in the church growing up. I, I never heard some of these things before. No, no one ever spoke to me about the Holy Spirit like this. And, and I feel like I've kind of missed out on a relationship with someone who could have helped me in my walk. And of course, we know now can help uh, her in her walk as she pursues the Lord and growing in holiness and all of the wonderful things the Lord has prepared for us. But I think it was sort of an, an invitation for me as a leader in the church to look at um, my own heart, to look at my own experience. Like, am I speaking about this person that has changed my life? Am I, am I living it? Am I, am I modeling it? Am I giving permission to others around me to do the same? Am I normalizing it, right? Does that look normal in our churches, in our church families? Um, I remember growing up and my dad, every morning, I can't remember a morning where he wasn't, when we woke up on the sofa, reading the scriptures. And it wasn't something he ever told us to do. It wasn't like, this is what you must do to be a Christian. But recently I was staying with my brother and his family and I, I woke up in the morning and saw my brother sitting on the sofa uh, reading the scriptures. Um, it was something he was formed in, in, in the context of family, in the context of like, this is just who you are. And, and it wasn't a, a told or an, an instruction, but rather a modeling and an invitation to follow. And so I think for us as leaders, we can help normalize the Holy Spirit by modeling and showing um, what it looks like to have that relationship with a real person. Well, I think uh, Sarah and Father Alex hit it on the nose. Um, and I'll just, just add that I think as Catholics, we're comfortable with liturgy. We're comfortable with programming. Uh, we're comfortable with catechesis. We have many centuries of doing those things. And those are all good. And essential for the church. But we can get so used to our way of doing things, our structures, that we forget how crucial it is to let God have his way, to step back and let God control things. Um, Father Alex mentioned the fear um, and it's very real, and I, I've seen that in various ways. I remember visiting a country in Europe uh, where many, many parishes were doing the Alpha program, and I spoke to the people there, and they were saying um, Alpha is not having the effect that it's meant to have because many of the parishes are not doing the Holy Spirit weekend the way it's meant to be done. They're... Um, they're reducing it or they're confining it, and they are not allowing the Holy Spirit to have his way. And I was so sad when, when I heard that, because um, that means people are expecting something from Alpha, and they're disappointed, and that can turn them against Alpha or make them think it's ineffective, when in reality, they, they have not fully received what it is intended to give. Um, and that fear is can can be so powerful. I, I've experienced that fear in my own life that if I let go of control, I have no idea what God might do. And I think it operates even at a subconscious level and can lead pastors and lay leaders to quench the Holy Spirit. St. Paul saw that danger, and that's why he said, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not despise prophesying and, and all of the charisms of the Holy Spirit. So um, I think we, we have to be alert to that fear. We have to be honest with that fear. 
we we also have to acknowledge that sometimes there is a a real basis for it if we've seen charismatic events that were not well pastored people sometimes have been hurt by the misuse of charismatic gifts we need to acknowledge all of that and bring it to the lord and say lord i do not want to miss out on you for the sake of staying safe and staying in control. Help me, Lord, with my fears. Help me, Lord, with my desire for control, with my attachment to schedule and programs and, and the way we do things and the way we've already we, we've always done things. Help me, Lord, to let go of that so that you can do all that you want to do. And I think anyone who has a sincere heart for the Lord, will want to pray that, even if they're not quite ready or still nervous about what the Lord might do, I think they will at least be willing to acknowledge their fear and surrender it to the Lord and, and ask him to overcome that fear and that desire for control. Yeah, wow. Well, fantastic. Um, thank you. Uh, all three of you again fantastic wisdom uh, and I recognize myself in all three of the things that you've you know all, all three areas that, that, that you've mentioned I see it in myself so I know that our our, our, our listeners uh, this evening will will be recognizing some of that in themselves too um having kind of said all of that uh I, I suppose then the 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 question for us to consider now then is well how do we begin you, you've touched a little bit on it in, in what you've said already but how do we begin to um, how do we begin to normalize this kind of openness to the spirit, to this particular action of the Holy Spirit that we're talking about? Um, how do we begin to create spaces in our parishes for that kind of experience to become normal? Um, and so again, I think what I'll do, I'll bat this one to Father Alex first again, um, as a as a uh, a guy leading in, in a parish context, and then maybe we'll hear from, from Mary and then then from Sarah on that. So Father Alex, over to you again. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think there's uh, there's a number of things, and I just want to, I mean, underscore, like, go back and listen to everything Sarah just said a few minutes ago about kind of modeling that. I think um, what she said, there's lots of gold there uh, and a great starting point. I'll say also, like, you know what, just take Encounter Ministries and learn from Sarah and then read Dr. Murray's books, and then you'll have everything you need to kind of see revival happen in your, in your, in your space or whatever. But a couple of things come to mind. First, I think, I mean, we have to start with prayer. Prayer. Like you, we can't do anything without prayer. And so I think cultivating that hunger to see God move in new and powerful ways and ways that perhaps we, we've never expected before to, to really get on our faces right before the Lord and beg him for revival, for renewal in our parishes and to surrender those fears. So I think it all has to start with prayer and it has to start with us praying, you know, really leaning into God. Um, another thing as a, uh, from uh, the leaders uh, in parishes, I think, can cast vision for what they hope for, what they dream for, to share your heart. Even if you've never experienced or seen like a really powerful move of the Holy Spirit, I mean, read Acts and then bring that, you know, speak from the public. Like we dream of seeing a, a church come explosively alive in the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, so sh share that with your people and get that into their hearts. Um, so casting vision, um, celebrating stories of people. Like it, once you begin praying about it and talking about it, well, God's going to begin doing things, right? And so keeping our eyes open, dis keeping uh, discerning hearts and looking for where is God moving and then pointing it out to, to the people around us to be like, hey, this is what happened in this person's life, right? Celebrate those stories. Testimony is so powerful. And then um, I also think multiplying opportunities for people to have experiences of the Holy Spirit. You know, so uh, if you're not doing the Holy Spirit weekend away and the and the and really leaning into the the healing night, like start start there, um, but also you know start prayer teams after mass on the weekend, and that gives people an experience to practice the gifts of the Spirit, but also to open themselves up to receive prayer, right? Um, also when people ask you for prayer as a parish leader, don't just kind of say yeah yeah no I'll pray a rosary for you. Do that 
Absolutely. That's amazing. But you know what? Just lean in and pray for them right there. And then, and really ask the Holy Spirit to move and expect him to move when we ask. And uh, so take little risks, step out in faith and trust that if you're really pursuing God, we're going to see things happen and then look and watch and wait. Amen. Um, again, I would, I would just reinforce everything that Father Alex just said. Um, as I've been looking at the Asbury phenomenon and, um, and thinking about what we can learn from it, um, several things have come to mind. One, they had a history of revival. Hmm. They, they knew what it had looked like in the past. And if we look with our long vision at the history of the Catholic Church, we have a history of revival. So people need to read the lives of the saints, especially those who were part of a powerful move of the Holy Spirit. You can think of St. Patrick evangelizing Ireland, St. Um, Francis Xavier evangelizing India and the Far East. You can think of St. Vincent Ferrer in medieval Europe and uh, Francis and Dominic and, and so many who were witnesses to and participated in the awesome power of the Holy Spirit. So that's the first thing, history. But secondly, at Asbury, there's there was hunger. And, and Father Alex talk, talked about casting a vision. We need to stir up hunger. So many of the saints speak about desire as being the engine of spiritual growth. Like, how much do you thirst for the Holy Spirit in your life? How much do you thirst for the Holy Spirit to move in power in your parish, in your diocese? And, and if we see that our hunger is weak, because it usually is, we're distracted, we, um, we're constantly changing the subject on God, we can ask him to increase our hunger, which then drives intercessory prayer. There, there are people at Asbury who have been praying for years and decades for re revival. And God hears that prayer. I, I spoke recently with one of them, David Thomas, and he said, I can tell you now that I want to intercede for the rest of my life. Now that I see what intercession can bring about. Amen. It makes Amen. me want to never stop praying that God will move like this again. So history, hunger. And then the third thing that I, I see there is good stewarding. And what I mean by that is when God began to move in a sovereign way and, and his presence became very palpable and, and no one wanted to leave the chapel and the praise and worship just continued, the, the leadership did not say, okay, well, it's nine o'clock now, time to close the chapel, everybody go home. They said, God is moving. We are not going to lock the doors, uh, you know, shut things down. He's moving. And by the next day, that meant students missing classes. And thankfully, the administration of the university said, a revival like this is more important than classes. Now, eventually, they did say students go back to class. You know, there, there were some, uh, some, some very reasonable limits, but they were willing to accommodate as much as possible what the Holy Spirit was doing, which also meant welcoming 20,000 visitors in one weekend into a town of 6,000 people. <laughs> I mean, people flew from New Zealand, Finland, Brazil, Indonesia to come to Kentucky because of what the Lord was doing there. So we need to be willing to completely change our plans, to um, organize events in our parish that are open-ended, or even if we organize events that are closed, close ended and have a closing time, um, we have to be willing to change. We have to be willing to let the Holy Spirit do the unexpected. As, as I think Father Cantela Mesa says, 
sometimes we we pray, come Holy Spirit. You know, we have that traditional prayer, come Holy Spirit. And then we say, but please sit in the back seat and behave yourself. (laughs) So we have to be willing to pray, come Holy Spirit, and then be knocked off our feet or swept off our feet when he actually comes. That's so beautiful. I mean, I would say everything, ditto to everything (laughs) Father Alex and Dr. Mary have shared. Um, As I was thinking about it and listening though, I, I was thinking about how sometimes we can hear these beautiful things and we're like, yeah, we should do that. Like the priest should do that. The, the lay leaders should do that. Like our church should be doing that. Right. So like they should do that and then I'll come or I'll show up or I'll do uh, whatever it is they put on for us or create opportunities or space for us to do. And what I love of actually one of the other revivals, great awakenings uh, historically is, is that uh, many of them were stirred by people in the pews who no one was telling them about it from the pulpit. No one was telling them about, you know, stories of great revivals in the past. They stood on the promises and the word of God. And they said to God, like you said, you would pour water into this dry land. You said, these are the promises we see in the scriptures. Lord, would you do it in our town? Would you do it in our churches? And even a step beyond that, I think there's an invitation for each of us to say to the Lord, there's a a story of a great like revivalist preacher who would travel around and someone said like well how do I start revival how does this happen I, I want to see revival in my town and he invited um, this young person to go home draw a circle on the floor step inside the circle and say let revival begin in this circle first God and mm-hmm. I think it's an invitation for each of us to to say Lord I'm I'm maybe not as hungry as I once was when I first met you Lord, maybe I have forgotten our history or or maybe I have forgotten some of the amazing things in the past, but Lord, through the the power of your Holy Spirit, could you stir up hunger in me again? Could you bring revival first to my own heart? Uh, could Could you reawaken that flame of love that first drew me into friendship and relationship and covenant with you? Um, I think there's something so beautiful and inviting about when we're living this out, it's it's hard for the Lord not to show up, right? When you have these people who are hungry and individually taking ownership of like my own hunger, my own thirst, my own faith, my own longing, my own desire, right? To see uh, you move God and to see you first move in me. And I, and I think that was actually one of the prayers, uh, you know, of these young people at, at Asbury was like, Lord, show me your love. I don't know that I know your love like was preached about. And so I think there's just an an invitation for each of us to to take a look at our own hearts, our own longings, our own desires, and not just say to the church, you know, as we are the church, but to not just say to the church, um, you do it, or I'll come, or I'll show up at that prayer meeting. But what if we're all crying out to the Lord in our homes, in our hearts, in our families, for generations, right? From not just for us, but for the generations that will come and the generations that we're raising. Would we would we cry out for a move of God that even if we don't get to see the fruit of it right in this moment, that it would be worth it for what God would do in the earth in the way that the Lord right. would renew and revive our churches. I'm experiencing revival right now, just listening to Sarah. This is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, that uh, I could I could be listening to this and engaging with this for hours on end, um, because this is just stirring a fire in in my in my heart. So so thank you to to the three of you for that. Um, yeah, just fantastic stuff. Uh, really fantastic stuff. Um, and I'm I'm feeling equally convicted and challenged, um, as well as encouraged. So watch this space. Keep an eye on Ireland. Um, well. Um, for uh, the eagle-eyed among you uh, will have noticed that we advertised the webinar this evening as having four panellists. And so far, we've seen and heard from three of them. But Father John Adams uh, is based down in New Zealand, in Christchurch in New Zealand. And it's it's fairly early in the morning down there at the moment. So that's why Father John isn't with us live. 
But um, I managed to catch up with Father John recently and posed the same questions to him just to see what he was experiencing down in his parish down there in Christchurch. So we're going to hear from Father John just now. So, Father John, thank you for joining us all the way from New Zealand this morning. It'd be great to hear from you just a little bit about who you are and what your parish is like. I'm in a parish that we'd be considering medium size here. The statistics from last year, our mass count average was about 550. We're a growing parish. Uh, that's uh, good news for us. Uh, many young families and children. Three ge separate geographical um, positions here in the north of Christchurch, New Zealand. Quite a diverse group, which I'm somewhat proud of. Um, we uh, we have praise and worship here in our parish, but we also have the old uh, traditional form of the Mass once a fortnight here. So I've got quite a diversity of um, sort of theological appetite, if, you, if you'd like to put it that way. Yeah. Well, Father John, that's great to, to, to get some sense of your, your parish context in terms of the outside of the context of mass what, what are the kind of spaces that you've been sort of intentionally creating to, to enable people to enter into that i've got a senior leadership team of course and we have discovered that we're our most efficacious when we're fostering a certain openness to the spirit so our meetings often we might have an hour and a half meeting we might spend at least half an hour in prayer rather than charge straight into the business that's in front of us to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. We're encouraging Alpha's uh, part of our, our repertoire, one of the on-ramps into our parish. And of course the Holy Spirit weekend is absolutely crucial to that process. Also, we're about to run a leadership summit here and it will be based on people discovering the gifts that they, that in fact were given to them at their baptism. So we think part of leadership here, again, there are some particular skills that are required, but fundamental to being a, a Catholic leader is to uncover those spiritual gifts that we have, mm. a bit like the Christmas gifts under the tree, they just haven't been unwrapped yet. I love the fact that, you know, you, you, you've said it several times there that you're, you're being intentional about it. And that's the thing, none of, none of this happens by accident. None of it happens after after one sort of single prayer. Can I give you a particular testimony? I'm a bit, uh, personality-wise, I, I feel a bit wooden. I, I'm, not, I'm not a naturally sort of charismatic uh, leader. Um, and last year, just before the Feast of Pentecost, my team said to me, after we'd prayed, Father John, why is Pentecost only one day? Can't we do more than that? And I said, well... It's not really part of the church's repertoire to, to have an octave of Pentecost. They said, why not? So against my better judgment, my team said, come on. So we, we had a whole week of events. And it started off with the Pentecost Mass. And my team, they got me the certain weak point. And they said, Father John, after Pentecost Mass, please stay up the front and invite people up for prayer. We'll have prayer teams up the front. But we want you to pray over people as well. Now, I thought I'd be standing up the front like a spare dinner, to be honest, because, as I say, I don't manifest those particular gifts. Um, Michael, it was incredible what happened. Everyone stayed. There was a queue stretching down, down the aisle, outside the church and wow. back towards the door of people waiting for me uh, uh, to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to be a part of uh, their lives. I got very emotional myself. The music team kept trying to find new music to keep playing because uh, we all thought this would take two or three minutes. You know, it just went on and on and on and on. And it just opened my eyes to the appetite, sort of a hidden appetite in people. People, people have a sense of it in their lives, but it just needs to be sort of set free or something. Yeah. And the rest of the week, Michael, every, everything we did that week was anointed. I don't think I'll do another single Pentecost again. I think we'll do the octave here. Every year, that's a chance for people to rediscover or discover for the first time their, their gifts. Beautiful.
That is absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. It was great. Right. It was great. Yeah. Father John, thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. I've loved the opportunity to be with you. Thanks for that. Well, a huge thanks to Father John once again, uh, if he's listening in somewhere in New Zealand uh, right now. Uh, a huge thanks to Father John for sharing his, uh, his wisdom and his fantastic parish experience with us. Well, we are coming towards the end of our time together together this evening. Um, and we don't want this to just be a webinar where we have talked about the experience of the Holy Spirit. That would be a tempting thing to do. We want to actually now just spend the next short while in prayer asking the Holy Spirit to come and to minister to us. Um, and of course, the one thing we've discovered this last couple of years is that the Holy Spirit is not confused by Zoom. He's not scared by Zoom. And he's the only person who's in every room that's represented on this webinar. So um, we're just going to have a time of prayer and I'm going to invite our, our three live panelists uh, and they're going to, to, to pray for each of you who's tuned in and, and listening here this evening. So uh, let's pray and just ask the spirit to come and to do what only he can do. So, Holy Spirit, would you come and rest upon each of us now? Holy Spirit, would you come and fill each heart that is tuned into this webinar tonight with the fire of your love? And would you do in each of us now, Lord, what needs to be done? And Lord, we pray as the early Christians prayed in Acts 4. Look upon their threats. And the threats of the secularized culture, the challenges of living the gospel today, the hostility to the faith today, and our weakness. Lord, look upon all of that and grant your servants, everyone on this call, to speak your word with all boldness. Father, we pray that you would put within us the boldness that characterized Peter and the apostles on the day of Pentecost. And Father, we pray that you would stretch out your hand to heal, to manifest the amazing and glorious healing power of the risen Lord Jesus, and to do signs and wonders in his name. And Father, we pray that Holy Spirit fire would descend upon everyone here, enkindling our hearts, renewing our minds, bringing whatever is dry or dead in us to life again. Father, that we would be the, the sparks of the holy fire of revival that you want to bring in your church throughout the world. We give ourselves to you, Lord. We give ourselves to this divine plan and this desire that comes right from your throne. And we pray that you would fulfill it in our time. Father, we thank you that you love to send your spirit to fill us afresh. We pray for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit for every person on this call, every person who will watch this call, Lord, you are not bound. You can be anywhere with us in any moment. So I ask that your presence would be so real. So real, Lord, to each person in just the way that they need to experience and encounter you. You made us, Lord, you know us down to the very fibers of our being, Lord. So speak to us now how we need to hear from you. Pour out your love into our hearts in the way that we need to be loved by you. I ask, Father, that if there is any, any lies, any 
any uh, distractions from the enemy that are discouraging us or making us feel like we can't do it or that we are unworthy of your love or that we can't step into the fullness of who you have created us to be, to live out the mission you have entrusted to each of us. God, I ask through the power of your spirit that you would just wash that all away. And you'd replace it with the truth of who we are in you, that we are beloved sons and daughters, that we are equipped and empowered with the same spirit that Jesus walked in on this earth. So I thank you, Father, for just encouraging us down to the deepest parts of our hearts with your Holy Spirit, that you're comforting those who need your comfort in this moment. You're strengthening us. It's because you love us, but also because you are entrusting to us the legacy and the mission of your son Jesus on the earth today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We ask for more. Yes, Lord, we praise and thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. And uh, as we're praying, I just I had a sense that maybe there are people on this call with us today who perhaps they're sort of like, uh, for lack of a better term, closet charismatics, and they've kind of been hiding kind of the, their, their knowledge of the ways of the Holy Spirit because they're afraid of being judged or being seen as weird or um, afraid of challenging the status quo. But I feel like the Lord is saying now is the time. You know, you've been waiting patiently and and perhaps even through this time i've been humbled but i feel like the lord is saying now is the time to step out and to share the gift that i have placed within your heart with my people and i also uh i see others um people perhaps who have not uh, experienced the consolation of god in a very long time like you've known what it's like to experience intimacy in prayer you've had powerful experiences but it's been a long time and you feel dry. And I feel like the Lord is saying dry things burn best because I feel like the Lord is going to spark or ignite a fire in those hearts here today, right now. And as we pray together, uh, I realize there's somewhere between 800 and 1800 people on this call. This might be the largest gathering in the world today, right now in this moment of people who are inviting the Holy Spirit to come. And so this is an incredible moment to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts and into our lives. And I see these little lights all around the world, and these are embers, and uh, embers in our parishes, embers in our hearts, embers in our lives. And, and I think that represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is never absent from his church. Uh, but I feel like God is saying, fan into flame, fan into flame. And so what I would like to do with all the people on this call right now is just together with one heart, with one voice to cry out, come Holy Spirit. So wherever you might find yourself, maybe you're with others joining us right now, maybe you're alone in your room and just join me as together all 800 or 1000 or however many of us there are crying out saying, come Holy Spirit. Just say those words. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 Come. Come with power. Come, Holy Spirit. Come into our hearts, Lord. Come into our lives. Let let this be the moment that we look back on as the beginning of a, a revival of something new, a renewal breaking out across the church. Lord, why not us? Why not now? We're hungry for you, God. We surrender to you, Lord. Whatever you want to do in our lives, we give you permission to accomplish your will in our lives, in our ministries, in our workplaces, uh, in our families, in our hearts. We surrender to you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We surrender to you. And that, that word control is coming. And I just, again, I feel like the Lord is saying, will you surrender control? You know, it says in the scriptures where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 
And control is the opposite of freedom. And I feel like God is saying, I want you to be free. I want you to be free to walk in the fullness of my love and my plan for you. And so, Lord, we surrender control. Surrender control of our lives. We surrender control of our hearts. We surrender control of our ministries, our parishes, all of it, God. It's yours. Holy Spirit, come. Why not us, Lord? Why not now? Why not this moment? Come, Holy Spirit. And Father, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And we make all of these prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much uh, for that. All of you, it's amazing uh, leading us in this prayer of surrender to the Holy Spirit and praying, uh, speaking about it, but then actually getting into uh, praying together and inviting the Holy Spirit. So thank you so much, uh, Father Alex, Dr. Mary, Sarah, and Michael for leading this great conversation. Uh, amen in the chat. Amen and amen. Um, I would love to to hear if you could over in the chat, um, perhaps something that's resonated for you in a particular way today, perhaps something that the Holy Spirit has um prompted you in through today's discussion if you go to the chat it might just be one word um, or if you'd like to write out a little bit of what you've been encouraged in or empowered in or uh, a sense from the holy spirit that you'd like to share for the edification of of our whole group to give glory to god in this time i'd love for you to just summarize if you could in the chat and thank you to all of you who are are chiming in it's beautiful to see uh to see all that the lord is doing all that the holy spirit is doing through this time so thank you for that and keep those uh keep those coming and thank you for joining us for for this wonderful and beautiful event we've just had uh, this collaboration as i mentioned at the beginning between alpha and divine renovation if you've really enjoyed uh, this discussion and uh, as father alex said if you'd like to have a discussion with others regarding this uh, topic i saw some people in the chat wondering if we'd have it recorded and we we do indeed and we also have a discussion guide available. So if you've been particularly inspired and want to share this with others in your parish, perhaps in your small group, or maybe your pastor and some leaders would like to get together to discuss some of these important topics around uh, being clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit, then you can go to the Divine Renovation website. We'll have some links in, in the chat shortly and in the follow-up email. So you can download that guide and have a discussion and rewatch uh, this amazing conversation and prayer time. So, uh, so thank you for that. A few announcements as we draw to a close, friends. Um, the leadership conference hosted uh, from Alpha is happening in person this year at Royal Albert Hall in London on May 1st and 2nd. And it's going to be an amazing global gathering uh, with worship and inspiring speakers and the chance to connect with leaders from all around the world. So we'd love to see you there. And if you can't join in person, you can join online for the best of the conference distilled down into just over two hours online on May 24th, and then repeated on May 25th. So you can go to Alpha's Leadership Conference website, which we will post in the chat. There it is. <clears throat> leadershipconference.org.uk slash LC23 to find out more and register. And to find out more about Alpha, I, I really encourage you to, if you haven't heard much about Alpha or haven't connected with Alpha in a while, uh, you can find an Alpha training near you and find out how you could host an Alpha yourself at your, your parish. You can go to alpha.org slash Catholics to hear all about that and to learn more about uh, running an Alpha, introducing other people 
to Jesus inviting them uh, uh, to come. If you like this event, you can find many more online events and in-person events as well near you at divinerenovation.org slash events. We want to support and help you and your parish move from maintenance to mission. So check out our website for more upcoming events there. And if you're a priest on the call, we, we saw a, a many new priests join and uh, register for this call today. Or if you'd like to propose uh, perhaps a way to engage with your own pastor, Divine Renovation offers group coaching for priests at no cost to them. So we would love to share more with you or your pastor through uh, a 15-minute uh, Zoom call with one of our Divine Renovation guides that uh, is in your region. We have regions uh, across uh, the world. And you just have to visit divinerenovation.org to sign up for a time at your convenience that you could meet. We'd love to chat more about how we could begin to implement some of the things that we spoke about here on today's call with you. And at that site, you'll also actually find um, where to pick up all of Divine Renovation's other resources, including the Preaching on Purpose book that Father Alex uh, co-authored that we mentioned earlier. If you're curious about Encounter Ministries, you can find out more about that. There's the link in the chat uh, and, and Sarah's ministry, uh, but the, particularly about the Encounter School of Ministry. You can find out lots of information there. And Dr. Mary Healy has a website as well that we'll put in the chat, drmaryhealy.com. All of her books are there. There's lots of resources and articles, so really encourage you to visit uh, her site. There it is in the chat. And to check out all the great res resources from Dr. Mary. So that brings us to an end. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining, for engaging in the chat, for sharing uh, so well about what God has has done glory to God and uh, the chat is going to re remain open for a few minutes here so if you'd like to scroll back up and snag one of those uh, links that we shared in the chat or if you'd like to share again what uh, God did in you and and for you through this time together we would love to see your contribution in the chat which we will again leave open for a few minutes here Thank you again to our panel. Thank you all for joining us. It's been good to be together and we'll see you at another upcoming event. God bless you.